we will also the learning outcomes of this module would be to define what is selective attention, how we can determine and what influences selective attention, explain we will also explain about Broadbent's filter model of it, uh, attention and even we will also explain about uh, filter attenuation model. As we have discussed earlier students in the uh, previous chapters in the previous modules uh, that attention can be referred to as the behavioral and cognitive processes uh, of selectively concentrating on one aspect of the environment while ignoring other things. We can also refer to it as the allocation of processing resources. In layman language when you are using or when you are paying attention to something particular all your focus lies around that object. For example, consider that you are watching TV or your favorite channel on TV. Your mother calls you and she keeps calling you but all your attention is directed towards TV and you tend to ignore other things demanding your concentration which may be your name which is being said by your mother. Attention is one of the most or intensely studied topics within psychology and cognitive neuroscience and neuropsychology. We are bound to wonder about the sources of signals that generate attention. The effects of these signals are basically in turning properties of the sensory neurons and the relationship between attention and other cognitive processes which would be like working memory and etc. What happens when you basically uh, when your attention is divided or diverted to two things? What causes us to drop everything at hand and redirect all our attention to some new issues in our environment? How do we prioritize which issue deserves our attention most and we should focus it on first? Neuropsychologists have been trying to answer these questions. But to comprehend the theories that have been proposed, we first need to understand what selective attention is all about. Selective attention. As you read these words, 100 million sensory messages may be clamoring for your attention. Only a few of these messages register in awareness. The rest you perceive either dimly or not at all. But you can shift your attention to one of those unregistered stimuli at any time. For example, how does the toe of your right foot feel right now? Attention then involves two processes of selection focusing on certain stimuli, filtering out other incoming information. A technique called shadowing has been used to experimentally study these processes. The experiments demonstrate that we cannot attend completely to more than one thing at a time, but we can shift our attention rapidly back and forth between the two messages, drawing on our general knowledge to fill in the gaps. For example, People listening to music and working on a math problem simultaneously are actually either listening to music or focusing on the math problem at a particular instant. They can divert their attention from the math problem and catch up with how much the song has passed. Visual attention. Generally speaking, visual attention is thought to operate on a two-stage process. In the first stage, Attention is distributed uniformly over the external visual scene and processing of information is performed in parallel. For example, you are given a book to read and you are told to go on a certain page and read a certain paragraph. When you are operating on the first stage, you take a look at that page in general while parallelly paying attention to the exact paragraph you have been asked to read. In the second stage, attention is concentrated to a specific area of the visual scene and processing is performed in a serial fashion. As you begin reading, your focus is concentrated on the individual word. Surrounding the focus is a fringe of attention that extracts information. This fringe extends out to a specified area and this cutoff is called the margin. Basically, you read each word individually while being oblivious to the words accompanying that particular word. Selective Auditory Attention Selective Auditory Attention 
or selective hearing is a type of selective attention and involves the auditory system of the nervous system. Selective hearing does not involve the sounds that are not heard. However, it is characterized as the action in which people focus their attention on a specific source of a sound or spoken words. The sounds and noise in the surrounding environment is heard by the auditory system, but certain parts of the auditory information are processed in the brain only. To grab a better understanding of this, imagine yourself in party, standing with a group of people having a discussion on, let's say, psychology. Since it's a party, there is noise everywhere in the environment. You are able to be a part of your discussion because you are focusing on the specific source of spoken words and other noise is automatically ignored. In attentional blindness, electronic recording and brain imaging studies have revealed that unattended stimuli register in the nervous system but do not enter immediate experience. In attentional blindness is a term coined to refer to the failure of unattended stimuli to register in consciousness. You can look right at something without seeing it if you are attending to some other stimuli. This is what happens when you are deep in thoughts and you are directly staring at someone without realizing it. Also, in attentional blindness, it's surely relevant to finding that cell phone conversations significantly reduce driving performance. You don't expect to pay attention on the road ahead if you are hearing on phone that your mother has been admitted to a hospital, right? Also, it's a very bad idea to drink and drive as alcohol ingestion increases in attentional blindness. Environmental and personal factors in attention. Attention is strongly affected by both the nature of the stimulus and by personal factors. Stimulus characteristics that attract our attention include intensity, novelty, movement, contrast, and repetition. Sexually oriented stimuli are especially attention grabbing. No wonder advertisers use these properties in these commercials and packaging. Internal factors such as our motives and interests act as powerful filters and influence which stimuli in our environment we will notice. For example, if you are a graphologist, you will be particularly interested in a handwriting sample before you notice anything else. This all is basically about prioritizing which stimuli are we going to register and attend to and which stimuli can be ignored for a while. These factors are the core of selective attention and are under extensive study to help understand the concepts of attention better. Theories of Selective Attention Broadbent's Filter Model of Attention Donald Broadbent was the first to describe humans processing system using an information processing metaphor. In this view, Broadbent proposed an early selection view of attention such that humans process information with limited capacity and select information to be processed early. In layman language, there is a certain capacity beyond which humans don't process information. Also, humans passively prioritize as to which information or what part of information has to be processed early as compared to the remaining information. Keeping in mind that the capacity is limited, Broadbent suggested that a selective filter is needed for information processing. He further stated that all stimuli are initially processed for basic physical properties. These basic characteristics can include pitch, color, loudness, and direction. Unlike the physical properties, Broadbent believed semantic features which include relationship between signifiers like words, phrases, etc. are far more complex. Therefore, these semantic features impose a limited capacity on the temporary storehouse of incoming stimuli. That is the reason why based on physical characteristics, the selective filter allows for certain stimuli to pass through the filter for further processing, while unattended stimuli 
is filtered out and lost. Further, goal-directed behavior requires attention to be controlled. Hence, a high degree of selectivity is put forth in the information processing stream. When developing his model, Broadbent emphasized the separating of incoming stimuli to attended or unattended channels. Basically, the initial filtration occurs when the incoming stimuli is segregated into the ones which will be attended and the ones which won't be attended. What's noteworthy here is that channel selection is guided through attention. If one is attempting to attend to a stimulus based on their current goals, they will employ voluntary attention. Whereas, if a sensory event catches one's attention, reflexive attention will be employed. To comprehend this, imagine a group of typists sitting in a room all ready for instructions on what to type. Each typist has been assigned to a different person. As soon as the work begins, there are sounds of legal documents being recited in the room. But an individual typist only hears what his boss is saying instead of what other typist boss is reciting. What the type is doing here is mere segregating of incoming stimuli into attended and unattended channels. This demonstrates how he uses voluntary attention to fulfill his current goal. If suddenly his colleague asked for a paper, he would not be distracted and hand him over the paper. This is how he uses reflexive attention to respond to a sensory event. Once certain piece of information is passed through the filter, it is then stored in short-term memory. Basically, after information has passed the filter, apart from it being available for short-term memory, it is also made available for manipulation of the selected information prior to storage in long-term memory. Filter theory then postulates that there is an overwhelming amount of information entering the channels. And because of that, a selective filter is needed to cope with it. How is that done? By making sure that the initial messages that were filtered for further processing also undergo filtration. Filter theory reflects an early selection theory because certain information is selected and attended to at a very early stage of information processing. Filter attenuation theory the word attenuation basically refers to weakening in force or intensity. It is the property of something that has been weakened or reduced in thickness or density. Any Tressman, a graduate student of Broadbent's, proposed an alternative mechanism, the attenuation theory, because she was not fully convinced by the notion of a filter performing decisions as to what stimuli gain conscious awareness. This theory supports an early selection filter. However, in this case, the filter also attenuates stimuli presented to the unattended channel. Remember, we discussed in Broadbent's theory that there is a splitting of incoming stimuli into attended and unattended channels. We know that the unattended channel includes weakly attended to information. To gain conscious awareness, this information must surpass a threshold. Tressman proposed that this threshold is determined by the word's meaning. Important words have a low threshold, allowing them to easily gain awareness, whereas unimportant words have a higher threshold to prevent them from gaining awareness inappropriately. In this way, the threshold for each word acts as a filtering mechanism relying on semantic features. You must have experienced how your attention instantly shifts if you hear your name being mentioned in the discussion of an adjacent group of people. This is the mechanism behind it. Another interesting thing to note here would be the fact that not everybody's name would have a low threshold for you. If the adjacent group of people mention a stranger's name like Sam, it would have a high threshold and not gain your awareness. Interesting, right? We have seen that Tressman's attenuation model of selective attention retains both the idea of an early selection process 
as well as the mechanism by which physical cues are used as the primary point of discrimination. After the initial phase of attenuation, information is then passed on to a hierarchy of analyzers that perform higher level processes to extract more meaningful content. Questions like, does this affect my well-being? What category should I put this information in? are answered. The crucial aspect of attenuation theory is that attended inputs will always undergo full processing, whereas irrelevant stimuli often lack a sufficiently low threshold to be fully analyzed, resulting in only physical qualities being remembered rather than semantics. Additionally, attenuation and then subsequent stimuli processing is dictated by the current demands on the processing system. It is often the case that not enough resources are present to thoroughly process unattended inputs. Therefore, even after the leakage from unattended channels, the information might not be processed merely because of the absence of resources to process it. Recognition Threshold The operation of the recognition threshold is simple. For every possible input, an individual has a certain threshold or amount of activation required in order to perceive it. The lower this threshold, the more easily and likely an input is to be perceived, even after undergoing attenuation. As mentioned earlier, your name has a lower threshold for you than the capital of Uganda. Threshold Effectors Context and Priming Context is a set of facts or circumstances that surround a situation or event. It plays a key role in reducing the threshold required to recognize stimuli by creating an expectancy for related information. What this means is, if a word has to lower its threshold for you to recognize it, it does so with the help of context. Context acts by a mechanism of priming, wherein related information becomes momentarily more accessible, lowering the threshold for recognition in the process. Consider the following statement. The recess bell rang. Here, the word rang and its synonyms would experience a lower threshold due to the priming facilitated by the words that precede it. Subjective importance Words that possess subjective importance will have a lower threshold than those that do not. You are more likely to process the stimuli if it says your house is in fire. Words of great individual importance such as your own name will have a permanently low threshold and will be able to come into awareness under almost all circumstances. On the other hand, some words are more variable in their individual meaning and rely upon their frequency of use, context and continuity with the attended message in order to be perceived. Interestingly, taboo words catch our attention way more quickly than the words we normally use in daily contexts. Hierarchy of Analyzers The hierarchical system of analysis is one of maximal economy. While facilitating the potential for important, unexpected or unattended stimuli to be perceived, for you to be able to recognize it, it ensures that those messages sufficiently attenuated do not get through much more than the earlier stages of analysis. Imagine loads of information demanding your attention. This prevents an overburden on sensory processing capacity. If attentional demands are low, full hierarchy processing takes place. If demands are high, attenuation becomes more aggressive and only allows important or relevant information from the unattended message to be processed. So students, what we have done in this model, let's try and grasp Let's try and understand or, re uh, or recollect what all we have studied in this model today. 
Uh, attention can be referred as the behavioral and cognitive processes of selectively concentrating on one aspect of the environment while ignoring, ignoring all other, other, other things. Uh, selective attention refers to focusing all your attention of a specific source of incoming stimuli. It involves two processes of selection which could be focusing on certain stimuli and filtering out other information. In uh, attentional blindness is a term coined to refer to a failure of unattached or unattended stimuli to register in consciousness. Attention is strongly affected by both the nature of the stimulus and by the, its personal factors. Broadman's filter theory of attention proposes an early selection view of attention such that human process information with limited capacity and select information to be processed accordingly or at the earlier basis. At attenuation theory is a, revi a revisal of Broadman's theory of selective attention and apart from supporting an early selective filter. It also states that filter also attenuates stimuli presented to unattended channels. 